we want to be modern, we want to be diverse, we want to be cool, because that doesn't keep us from being a uh, trustworthy payments company, right? What are you speaking on today? Um, today we're going to be talking about how to turn freelancers and contractors into assets. Um, traditionally, they've been viewed as liabilities and burdens and kind of one-off type stuff. And with the gig economy, it's supposed to get done. We're going to talk to these HR professionals about how do you start to really leverage and take advantage and maximize and get a return on your investment from the contractors and freelancers that you hire and work with. And then what are the tools, tips, and techniques to do that well? So it should be cool, man. Uh, bring a little flair to to a little old school situation, you know, a little HR. Cuff links, you know what I'm saying? Buttoned up, boom, fresh, shiny shoes, the whole nine. And I cut my teeth in that world. As, well, as I became an expert in payroll, HR, technology. It was funny because I understood how to talk that talk, like they talk, how to move, how they move. But then when I discovered Silicon Valley, and I saw how they was getting down at Apple, and they was walking around at Apple with short on. But this was the most innovative company in the world. I was like, oh, okay, wait a minute. And I never forget, that's when I went from PCs to MacBooks, and suits to jeans, and I never looked back. So now when I get to walk in here, they see me, but then when I start talking, they know what's up. You know what I'm saying? Right. They gonna feel more. Um, and so I'm a super duper traditional payroll and HR guy. Don't I look like it? <laughs> right? There's tons of tons of different names for the gig economy. Contingent workers, independent contractors, freelancers, side hustlers, self-employed, uh, walkers, drivers, uh, some other stuff I probably can't talk about. Uh, <laughs> what a, you know one of the least... <laughs> One of the leading conversations around misclassification is in the adult industry. Did you guys know that? Anybody work for adult industry companies? They're real companies, so don't don't. don't <laughs> yeah. So our you know um, dancers, exotic dancers, etc. There's a bunch of legislation happening in the market right now about how they're classified. What benefits do they get? How are they paid? Uh, it, it's every industry, right? And the goal is if there are value W two employees. You need to create an environment where they can thrive and where they find value. What's the number one thing millennials want out of their job? Flexibility. Flexibility, but that's one A, that's one B. One A is they want to feel like they're doing meaningful work. We want to be modern, we want to be diverse, we want to be cool, because that doesn't keep us from being a uh, trustworthy payments company, right? But the modern piece is probably the biggest word out of all of that, like modern, modern, modern. And if it looks like a stock image, don't use it. Like if it, if it even hints a stock, don't use it. Yeah, so on the content, the design, I think y'all know this, but we should ask for forgiveness, not permission, to create what we want to create. And then let them come back and say, just like the same thing, they'll come back and say, no, 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 no,